is hello set. hello welcome to my channel thank you so much for clicking yeah so now i'm here with the uh, james, james. <laughs> <laughs> i'm here with james there's something he discussed with me when we were in the church we go to the same church and uh he comes from uh, the west of Ireland. West Teresa, of Ireland, yeah. yeah. I, I, Irish, I normally say Ireland. 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 Well, it's Iceland, but I'm Ireland. It's on the west, an island off the west coast of England. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> and how do you pronounce it? I always pronounce Ar, it. like Ireland. Uh -huh. Ireland. Yeah, it's spelled I R E L A N D. Ireland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yes. Ireland. Yes. Okay, Ireland, yeah. I pronounced it right for the first time. Okay, then. <laughs> So there's something he explained to me that really, really uh, uh, attracted my attention. Is mm -hmm. that a good English? You that, know, you're coming from where they that's a perfect, have the good English. That's a, your English is very good, Teresa. No, no, that's Sometimes perfect. Sometimes I'm like, okay. I can, un I can understand you fully. This, your, your English is You uh, know, we excellent. didn't grow up in an English-speaking country. Well, this is, uh, yeah, this is it, yeah, but... Uh, we learn it in school, and yeah, it's different on, when you learn and when you grow yeah, with it. Yeah, but I can, I can fully understand you. So yeah, so he was talking about his life uh, those days before he became a believer mm. and it interested me so much that I thought somebody somewhere should hear it because I, it blessed me being a, a person who have met people who have gone through the same situation and I felt like there are some people out there who are still going through that situation and maybe this one would help them to see what they could change in your life. So mm. let's start from the beginning, what you told me before you came to Christ. Yes. Yeah. 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 So um, how are you living your life? Well, um, b before I start, um, uh, everything that I say and that everything that I have done in my life, I give God the glory. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, without um, his intervention in my life, then... Mm -hmm there would be no hope. Mm -hmm. I would have been lost and hopeless, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, just to give you a little bit of uh, uh, of my background, mm -hmm. uh, as we have already said, uh, uh, born mm -hmm. and uh, grew up in uh, a very rural area in the west of Ireland mm -hmm. and uh, in a, also in a Catholic, um, a Catholic environment. Yeah. And, uh, and so the... Um, during my growing up period, especially mm -hmm. the teenage years, mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh, alcohol and uh, loose living and uh, uh, smoking and uh, all sorts of things. This was uh, was the norm uh, as we grew up. And mm -hmm. so therefore, uh, you know, th those influences were sort of, um, you know, in a way, um, part of uh can become part of my lifestyle yeah so from a very young age i started smoking at what age oh uh, 12 13 oh my goodness yes yeah, yeah. and yeah. then mm. with the alcohol a little bit later on uh maybe uh, at the age of 16 mm -hmm. and and so gradually the drinking became more and more as it does mm. and um and so um yeah it had a big uh, and a, a negative influence on my life mm. and so um at the age of 18 i left home you left home left home and went to england to to find work mm -hmm. and uh, i wasn't too impressed with the with the catholic church mm -hmm. if you could call it a, a church okay um and so it was an opportunity for me to um to to throw off the catholic influences mm. and for me to have that freedom uh, to live my life the way that I wanted to, in a, yeah, self, yeah. a selfish way of drinking, smoking, mm. and uh, loose living, and what have you. And, you continue uh, to drink then, yeah? Oh, absolutely. This was before I ever had a, that born-again uh, mm. experience. And so when you left home and went to England, you are still drinking? Oh, even more so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the the drinking and the smoking and the loose living increased mm -hmm. because I didn't have anybody around me to to control, to control me and or say to you tell should, you you are doing wrong exactly. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was during that uh, that time in in my early twenties mm -hmm. that m I met my wife um, and uh, she also was uh, a drinker and uh, but I was still able to work and. Uh, 
sort of function, mm -hmm. you know, as, you know, as well as you can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, drinking alcohol and all sorts. So, yeah. and then, uh, so we, um, we married and we had uh, four beautiful children. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, but the drinking still Continue. continued. And both it, of you. Both of us. Yeah. Yes. So it affected my married life. It mm -hmm. affected my family life. I was spending money on uh, alcohol and cigarettes and other things mm -hmm. which should have been uh, diverted towards my home and my family and I didn't like this. Mm -hmm. I was digging a, a hole that was deeper mm -hmm. and deeper and deeper and deeper. I have a question in between, sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt. No, that's okay. Did you, did you, as you are doing this, were you sometimes coming to your senses and feel like, oh, I, I want to stop this? Do you have that feeling? Yes, I, it, deep, deep down... I had this uh, desire to live, live a good life, yeah. uh, and to uh, stop. to stop, uh, and and but I didn't have it within the me. Strength, the strength, the strength. I didn't yeah. have the strength within me. Mm -hmm. uh, a few occasions I tried the the smoke, stop smoking, mm -hmm. but uh, to no effect. Yeah, uh, I didn't have the desire to even give the drink up, mm -hmm. but I knew that it was causing a problem for myself and also for those people around me, particularly the ones that I loved, my, yeah. my children and my wife. Mm. And so um, in the end, that that hole was so deep that mm. I there's no way that I could uh, I could get myself out of it yeah. uh, on my own. Mm. And so um, I agreed to um, uh, with my wife's um, mm. uh, permission and her encouragement to to invite this uh, the local pastor yeah. from the Baptist Church. Mm, how did you meet him? I had never met him before. Oh, okay. You just <laughs> yeah. had to go there and the, the invite things, him. Things were so bad that mm. uh, I said, oh, well, I will try anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, um, and also maybe to get my wife off my back because uh, she was giving me a hard time mm -hmm. because of my behavior and, and rightfully so. Mm. And so little did I know that day Mm. Uh, when uh, when uh, I invited him into my home, mm. that he was going to transform my life. For Salvation has come to my household. Yeah, mm. and um, so um, he spoke to me about the um, the forgiveness that I have in Jesus Christ, mm. and. Um, that I could have my sins washed, washed away. away. I didn't. I didn't know this. I had never heard this message before. You didn't know. Uh, that <laughs> no, Jesus not through the. Came to... No, not through the Catholic Church. Uh, and they and don't teach that. They, they don't teach that. No, okay, they, they, no, no. Yeah. I know because I have been brought up in the Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah. They don't teach about repentance and salvation and forgiveness and cleansing and. Uh, uh, and righteousness that we find in in Jesus Christ, yeah. and that He can transform our lives. Yeah. Uh, you know, in 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 the uh, the twinkling of an eye, mm. He has the power to do that. I know firsthand. Uh, you know, I can testify through my own experiences of the faithfulness and the power of God. Mm. Uh, he's the one that created the universe, and yeah. so uh, if He hasn't got the power to actually transform a person's life, but we need to be. We need to be willing. Yeah. This is the important thing is yes. that we need to recognize that the mistakes that we've made. Yeah. The sins that we've committed. We've offended God. We've also offended our, our family and friends. Yes. We need to recognize that. That's all to part of repentance. Mm -hmm. And so um, he has the power through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us mm -hmm. to, um, yeah, to transform our lives. So first of all, that realization of Jesus Christ um, shedding his blood on the cross for my sins and the sins of the world. Mm. And that release and that, uh, oh, that feeling of um, cleanliness, you yes, know, yeah. you, where you could go to bed at night time and mm. you could sleep soundly knowing, you know, that God had forgiven you. He had cleansed you from all your yeah. unrighteousness. Yeah. And this, this was a wonderful feeling. Mm. And um, also uh, now 30... <sighs> 35 years later, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, speaking of his faithfulness down through the years, mm -hmm. and even with my own son who had gone to even 
Lord that he ended up in hospital almost dead mm. and how God transformed his life in the same mm. but in a in an even greater way than mine yeah and and we know that if we pray for family members or friends or mm. you know people that we know we know that we must continue praying for them and just hold fast to that <coughs> to that assurance that at some some day God will Mm -hmm. uh, at the perfect time come and he will intervene mm -hmm. in that person's life but we need to pray faithfully mm -hmm. um, I remember you mentioning something that uh, if the church had sent you away you wouldn't be where you are now yeah no Ex uh, oh yes I yeah. remember we discussed yeah, this, yeah. and, and uh, uh, what did they show you that made you feel like okay you are you are loved yes you are, yeah. they've received you yes that made you feel you are home that made you feel you are you are accepted you are yeah. accepted yes yeah. well what, what would you say about accepting alcoholic people in the family or in the church what would you say a little yes we let have, people know what makes somebody feels like uh i i want to change this because yeah. of what they've showed you or how they behave yes. to you yeah we discussed this Teresa, didn't we we discussed um yeah. the fact that um i didn't know god obviously mm -hmm. personally and i didn't have this personal relationship with him beforehand yes and i, I wanted his sort of assurance that mm -hmm. Uh, he was there with me. Yes. I, had, I had a feeling he was, yeah. but you need that assurance. So mm. I, I, first of all, I asked him because I thought, well, I, in a way, I don't know if this is the right way to put it, mm. put him to the test. Mm. Uh, and, and that regarding the cigarette smoking. And I said, mm. look, Lord, I'm being baptized on a sun, next Sunday. And I want to, mm. uh, as your confirmation to me, mm. I want to give the tobacco up. I, I don't want to smoke anymore. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I said, you know, I want to do this before my baptism as a testimony. Yes. And so on the t Tuesday previous to that Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, I said, this is the day. Mm -hmm. and, and just like that, the Lord uh, delivered me from the, from the nicotine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and never again did I ever s Amen. put a cigarette in That's my mouth. Yeah. yeah. But the, with the alcohol, it was, it was a little bit different. Yes. Uh, in that maybe I didn't recognize... Uh, my need for addressing the alcohol problem. Yeah, uh, but you are more reluctant. More you probably, only saw the cigarette yeah, more part, reluctant. But not the alcohol. But God, in His graciousness, uh, mm. He said, uh, "Maybe I will deal with your cigarette smoking first, and then we look at the other, the other sort of deeper it's issues." Only step by step. Yeah, step by <laughs> step, and that's why He's so yeah. patient and and understanding. He yeah. knows. He knows us deep, deep down. Yeah, and so. Um, the, uh, the, uh, but get, going back to your sort of uh, question about mm. the, the, way the, the church, the church and the and family, the, yeah. how should they? Yeah. What do you think they should handle yeah. alcoholic? Because yeah. you've been in it, yes. and some people don't normally understand. That. I don't blame them. There are people no, who know what the, to do. There are people who don't know. Yeah. So it's very important for people who are new yes. situation yeah. in this situation. Of course, yeah. And within within how the they church, are handled, the, yeah. the church, the people were very loving. The pastor was because at that stage. Maybe I would go out for a session of alcohol uh, on a Saturday night, yeah. and I'd come to the church on a Sunday, maybe stinking of uh, of beer and and what have you. Mm. Uh, but the church, uh, the people within the church were very understanding. They they, they could see that you were drinking. They yeah, could smell the alcohol. Of course, but they, they still welcomed you. I was still a very new Christian, mm -hmm. uh, just you know uh, coming come into the you know the family. Uh, of believers uh, mm. but I was still young and green we said green behind the ears mm. and uh, <laughs> and so they were very patient yeah uh, and and this could apply to anything other than it doesn't necessarily have to be alcohol it can be drug addiction mm. it can be prostitution uh, for you know maybe Whatever. somebody got mm. caught up in prostitution mm. you know it can be anything mm. God has the power but sometimes he, he he's so gracious that he doesn't deal with everything <clears throat> straight away because mm. that person may be not be able to cope with it will be too much it'll be too much to yeah. begin with and mm. so but getting back to the the, the 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 congregation they were very understanding and patient mm -hmm. and eventually um the lord was prompting me mm. even from that very early um from those early days mm. that it, it, it was necessary for me to to give up the alcohol mm. but he was allowing me a little bit of time maybe mm. to get over 
having to give the cigarettes up first of all yeah and then uh you know he he began to address the alcohol he began to sort of prompt me in the spirit mm -hmm. uh, about the need now james it's time you you that you considered the alcohol mm. and so we we talked about it didn't we Teresa? about mm. uh you know i wanted to give it up and and then i said to the lord i'm going to give it up just before the christmas time because yeah. christmas time is a time where People are celebrating, yes. uh, having a few drinks and what have you. And I thought, mm -hmm. Lord, if you, if you deliver me from alcohol, mm -hmm. and I can Christmas. do it, mm -hmm. if I can do it through the Christmas period, yes. I have cracked it. Not not me personally, but, but you have helped yeah, me. the God has helped me, yeah. and and that was it. And after that, it was the same with, as with the cigarettes. Uh, yeah, that was it. it and it's it's not a question of getting up every morning and think, oh, am I going to have another? You another... didn't even have the well, feeling of drinking. I have when the Lord when the Lord sets you free. He sets you free indeed. indeed. Yes. Yeah, and that's my my testimony. Mm. But we have to be. We have to come to that place where mm. we we say, now is the day. Now is the hour. I'm determined. Mm. I cannot do it in my own strength. Lord. You are the one who have to come to this point. Yes. Nobody oh, yes. will tell Nobody, you. Nobody. Yeah. You, and what about a, if people tell you you are doing wrong at that moment? Did people tell you like that? You are wrong. What I, are you doing? That time you are drinking. I, I have got to say that they were very patient and understanding. I must say that. Okay. So the believers in the church were, they, they obviously they had other people. We had drunkards. We had people who, who came into the church who were drunk mm -hmm. and sometimes aggressive. Mm -hmm. And for me... This was no problem because I had been there myself. I knew, um, mm. you know, I knew what it was like. I knew how to deal with it because I'd already already been there and had those experiences mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. It's not the person; it's the alcohol that that causes the problem. Yeah, I have another uh, one question too. Yeah, because the, the, all these things I I do see them and people see them and they maybe they they got to know how you. You've been there, so you might tell us a little bit. Uh, when somebody is uh, under the influence of alcohol and they, it makes them kind of misbehave, like yes, you know, yes. be rude or whatever yes, yes, to the surrounding, yes, yes. to the family or whatever. Mm. And when they are normal again, when they are not dr drunk, they are okay. Yes. Do you did you have that kind of? Problem too when you are under the influence of alcohol. Well, yes, are... because um, mm. alcohol, uh, we in Ireland we we call it the demon drink. <laughs> demon yeah, the drink, demon yeah. drink, mm -hmm. and and in a way that's a good way of uh, even though when we called it the demon drink, we didn't realize it's that that it was a, it was actually a demonic uh, you know, uh, spirit like exactly. it, that influenced us uh, because Satan comes. Uh, destroy. To destroy, to kill and destroy, mm -hmm. uh, but Jesus come to give his life and all his and all exactly. his fullness. Exactly. And so he he um, Satan will do everything in his power mm -hmm. to to destroy you in whatever way he can achieve that. Mm -hmm. And so this this is why it's called the demon drink because mm -hmm. when you're uh, under the influence of drink, you're under the influence of some outer outer mm. force who changes your your personality mm. and and in a way it's not you that's uh, that's behaving like that those are the the sort of outward um sort of uh, um uh, things that happen to you mm. uh you know uh, under the influence of alcohol yeah and so you need to maybe if somebody is being aggressive you you need to in a way step back and be careful mm. uh, but you so, sometimes you can you can take command of that situation in the name of Jesus. Yes. And yeah, but normally when somebody is under the influence of alcohol, you have to be a little bit careful, mm. but also understanding that mm. their behaviour is not normal. Will will cannot be normal. No, but and when the they're time. yeah, when they're so, some people get aggressive, some people get very quiet. Mm -hmm. It can have a different uh, uh, effect on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, we don't assume that just because somebody is drunk, they're going to go around fighting and breaking windows and stuff so what do you think as somebody who has been there if some if if at that moment one is aggressive or be misbehaving during when, when the time one is drinking and when is the fam how should the family or the people surrounding handle them yes. should they feel like hey you <laughs> bad boy bad girl you are drinking you got to get out of this place or whatever what do you think they should handle them well, to help them because yeah. there were some things that if somebody could have done for you those days would have felt like, oh, I need to stop this thing. 
Mm. There were some some words. There there were some treatments that if you are treated, you could have felt like, oh, I need to stop this. Yeah. Which way could have well, helped? Yeah. The, Which the, way? We 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 spoke earlier on about mm. the greatest. What are Jesus? Uh, the disciples asked Jesus, "What's mm. the greatest commandment?" Mm. And and Jesus said, "You love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your might, and love yeah. your neighbor as yourself." Yeah. And that applies to anybody, whether it be alcoholics or drug addicts or whatever. Yeah. And so, but love doesn't mean to say that you. Uh, you know, accept behavior like that no. because this will not change. It's not a good behavior. No, and Jesus said to the the, the lady, the woman who was um, caught in adultery, mm. he she he said to her, he he challenged her. He said, "Go and sin no, no more." more. Mm. Yeah, and so we we love the people, but we don't love the behavior. The behavior. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you don't go saying you're a bad. Jesus didn't say to the lady, "You are if, a bad woman." You no, know, he did not say that. He said. He said, nobody has condemned you and neither will I condemn you. Mm, so just go and don't so sin, go no and sin no more. So mm -hmm. you have to change your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no point in, in me sort of, you know, putting cushions around you and, and saying, oh, there you are. That's that's OK. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. You know, you need to, to be firm and say, if you genuinely, I have to say this to my son. Mm -hmm. I said, if you, I will help you all that I can mm -hmm. as a father. Yeah. The same as my heavenly father will Helps help me. You. But you have to also help yourself. Come to that place where you want help. Yeah. You, you, yeah. And then he can, he will not push himself upon you. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be in agreement with him. Yes. And, and say, Lord, I, I recognize that I'm an alcoholic. I'm a sinner. Yes. Uh, come and, and help me, forgive yes. me, and help me to sort of kick. You know, kick these habits. Exactly. Yeah. So there is, there's a, a you know, a responsibility mm. on our side as well. Mm. Yeah. You know, you can, you can say, oh, you know, it would be nice, and but uh, you know, in the end, you have to make a, you have to make an effort. Mm. You have to be willing within, genuinely within, you know, your own spirit and within, within your own life to mm -hmm. to make those changes, and then God will. Mm. He said uh, in, I think it's Revelation three twenty. He said, "Behold, I stand." At the door. And knock. Knock, yeah. But you must open the door mm -hmm. from the inside. He will not force his, mm -hmm. his way in, yeah. And so mm. uh, that would be my advice to anybody that, you know, whether it be drugs or any other form of addictions or what have you, that uh, we need to be willing to before change. God can, mm. you know, come in and in, intervene in our lives. Yeah? You have said it all. Yes. I, I'm so glad you discussed this. Yeah, today. well. And I'm so happy you said three things that really, really helped me, even me personally. Like uh, the one you said that the, the Lord says, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at the door knocking. Yes. So it's up to the person to see that God is knocking. God is there. He wants to help you. And then you said another thing that you have to be willing Absolutely, yes. You have yeah, to be yeah. willing. That has yeah. to come Just from that, you yeah. as a person who yeah. is under this influence. Mm. And then you said another thing that people should continue loving the person, mm. but not loving what they are doing. No. But to see how they can love them in a way mm. that they could get out of that situation where in a, in a, in a certain way that mm. they could see that they are still loved. Yes, isn't it? Yeah. Because if you if mm -hmm. you start saying, oh, you know, you're bad this and you're bad that. It's then, not help. Does you know, it help? He, the, the, the person will leave the church or the building. And, and you what would they feel when you oh, tell them like that? Oh, rejection straight away and never come back again, perhaps. So you have missed an opportunity to share the gospel message with them mm -hmm. and to give them... You have only showed them the bad... Yeah, the negative things. The and, negative things. Yeah, and, if, and, and they're leaving, uh, walking out the door and thinking, well, I didn't get anything there, did I? Why did I bother going in in the first place? And mm -hmm. so, yeah. But the, the, if, we're, if we're finished, Teresa, mm. I give him all the praise and the glory. Amen. Yeah, because um, that's, that's the way you it should be. You couldn't have done it on your no, own. No, no way. And, and, you know, I'm glad in a way that, that uh, I cannot, I, we cannot do anything. Mm. Uh, how does the song go? Through our God we shall do valiantly. Mm. You know, and it's without, without him we can do nothing. Yeah. With him we can do all things. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Praise his holy name. That is great. Thank you so much for this okay, testimony. Teresa, I'm yes. so blessed. And I know there are so many people who will be blessed out there. If you have this problem and you really desire to stop, take the pre precautions. How do you call it? Oh, the Proc precautions. Precautions. <laughs> some of them he has mentioned here he and there, and some of them you can get it on your own. And to those who have fa uh, families who are drinking, you have heard 
he he was doing that and uh, you see how they should be treated for me i feel we have learned so much from this testimony so i have been blessed so much and thank you so much we give praise to god and, and... Uh, you too that is watching may god bless you and uh, if you have the same case you know what to do okay bye bye